It's very interesting. A um, short while ago, uh, sitting in the reception room with people, with people, and I was talking with the lady, and uh, we're just talking about um, about people. Uh, uh, and this uh, this thing uh, in people that uh, um, this thing in people that seems to be hidden and this the and something inside us uh, generally that's sort of held in by uh, by culture, by society, which is uh, always trying to get out, looking some, looking for some sort of release. And uh, I was saying how that um, in in bowing, in, when when people bow, uh, maybe like to the shrine, to the Buddha Rupa, to, uh, to monks, then the the whole purpose of this is. Uh, is being able to to let go, uh, to release to release this thing that holds on to individuality, that holds on to self-importance. Uh, like in the in the West, um, it's very difficult very difficult for people to to bow down to things like religious objects or the idea of bowing to the Buddha, and especially like, like a monk who is another person, uh, because uh, we consider that. Um, why should I bow down to this other person? You know, why are they any better than me? Am I in some way relinquishing? Uh, um, am I behaving in an inferior way? In, is, is it this is implying that I'm inferior to this person in some way? And this uh, this is naturally you know, this is naturally the response. You know, I'm not I'm not bowing down to anybody. Uh, so it's that thing, it, it's that thing which uh, people maintain, you know, the, the individuality, that this, this need to defend that, you know, this thing to maintain that. This, it's as if everybody, every individual is, you know, in a sense, at war in the society, at war with everybody else, and they have to maintain their, their individuality, their status. Uh, their uniqueness, their identity. You know, the, the um, keeping up with the neighbours. You know, uh, see, the thing about this is there's something insidious about it uh, because it's, it's something which everybody is automatically engaged in but it, it isn't a particularly conscious thing. It's so sort of it's such a natural response that most of the time uh, it isn't even noticed. It isn't consciously uh, brought attention to. And we know we could be you know, living next door to people uh, for years, or people across the road, and in you know in like an unconscious way we are in some way. Uh, in competition to them, you know, we're, we're competing with them, or we're comparing ourselves to them, or we are, we're either conforming to what we consider to be their expectations. And it's it's ridiculous in a in a sense that although we we struggle to maintain this sort of individuality and this difference, and you know, almost as we want. We want a dominance in in being me. You know, this thing that is me is extremely important. You know, it needs to be respected. Uh, it needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be noticed. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we, we're caught in we, we're caught in this this web, this social web, where it's very necessary for us also to be seen to conform, you know, to be the same. Uh, you know, to our peers, those people uh, that where we work, and friends, 
and there's this, uh, this, this competition that's going on uh, the whole time. You know, there's, a, there's an inner struggle uh, which, we're coping, which we're, we're coping with and uh, a lot of the time it's just simply unconscious. You know, there's a, you know, no one wants to be considered to be uh, inferior. There's a struggle not to be seen to be inferior. You know, in fact, we like to give the impression that um, we're special in some way or, or we're well off. Yeah. And when I say we, I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I'm not talking about us particularly, the people in this room, but uh, people generally. Yeah, just people generally, and I include myself in that. Because also, even in monasteries, you know, even in monasteries, there's a great deal of status. You know, it takes a takes a, a a long time, you know, to deal with this. You know, it takes a long time to actually see it. You know, you see it by degrees, gradually. You get ideas about it, you know, and you do, and you, and you sort of, uh, you work with it. You, you, you become conscious of it, but it's always going into deeper and deeper degrees of realization. You know, you don't know, you don't really appreciate the extent to which you're actually caught in this whole uh, status consciousness. You know, this this individual identity, you know, which you hold on to. You, know, which you, you, you just, you don't. You don't want to give it up because it, it, it's just something that's very precious. And so, with in, in society, that we, it's you know, you can call this the the Jones, the keeping up with the Joneses rat race, the Joneses rat race, and. Uh, Uh, people are competing, and you know, uh, un- underneath, uh, y- you could say that uh, uh, you're being judged. And if if you go up a notch in in, in the status, then it seems to put a pressure on others around you. You know that, that, that they have to they have to conform. You know, for instance, it, certainly around um, wages. You know, uh, if your neighbours if your neighbours' wages goes up, you know, they, they suddenly is as if they're at a, a higher social standard. And, you know, even, and just unconsciously, there's a feeling that I can't, I can't really, I can't really relax <laughs> when I'm in the company of this person until I, I, I sort of, you know, sort of, I equal the balance in some way. And, um, you know, even maybe uh, if you suddenly hear that the, the neighbor's doing well, you know, uh, and, and something, you know, you know, you might be doing well, and the neighbour's doing well, and, and it, you know, I mean, the neighbour might be a friend of yours, you know, you, you, you know, generally, you know, he comes in for tea, and, you know, and, uh, you, you, you know, share a certain amount of activities with him, you're on friendly terms with him, but there's always this status thing going, and you know, and, and it's subconsciously, you might, you know, you might feel, you know. He suddenly might lose his job. He might get the sack, you know, and there might be something, you know, a sense of relief, you know. There's something in there's something inside that says, you know, uh, you know, uh, glad to hear that. You know, I need that. <laughs> I can relax a bit around. This. I don't have to worry about this fella. In fact, he can start worrying about me now. Or even even more insidiously, unconsciously, uh, there may be something in us that's kind of hoping that. Uh, some misfortune might happen over that side of the fence so that their their status goes down a bit. Yeah, because basically, um, uh, people don't like this. You know, we don't like... We're caught up in it. Uh, and really, people want to relax, don't they? I mean, uh, people want friends. People people want to be with people that, uh, that they can relax with. You know, isn't it nice to think that... You, the sort of friend that you can just be yourself. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to. Be, you don't have to watch what you're saying. You don't have to be divisive in some way. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to be anything special. Uh, you can just. You can just relax. You know, whatever you do with this person, uh, even if you do, do something bad or wrong, because they're a friend, you know, they're going to sympathise with you. It's not going to be that bad. They're going to forgive you. You know. I mean, underneath that possibility is there, and underneath that is you know what we're all aiming for. We all want such friends. We want to live in a community 
which is as friendly as possible, where we can relax as much as possible. It, it was interesting, I was reading a newspaper article some time back, and uh, they, there was a survey done by some a social server, and um, they, they, went through a, they went through just about almost the entire cross-section of everybody. This was in America. It was quite a big survey. They spent a lot of time doing but they went, they, they did a, a good sort of um, cross-section of, of trades, I- employments, um, professions, uh, generally. And uh, amongst all, all the questions they asked these people, they, they, they asked them, uh, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied with, with your salary? Are you satisfied with your wage? And, and generally these, these people said, well, they were, they, they, they were making sufficient money. They were making sufficient money uh, to cope with the situation, but um, they, they could really do with 20% more uh, on their wages. And this, the whole point of, of the publication of this survey was that this statement was absolutely general just about throughout the whole of the survey, just about, you know, it was an incredibly high percentage uh, of people that said, um, uh, yeah, things are okay, but 20%, 20% more in my, in my salary, uh, I'd be okay, I'd feel happy. Things would be comfortable. You know, things aren't really comfortable now. You know, I'm getting by, but another 20%, and that would do it for me, that would do it for me. And the, to say the reason this was published is because it was so general. Just about everybody had, had the same idea. In, in other words, what you could say was that all of these people, it wasn't anything to do with the 20%. It was this basic feeling in people generally that you know, they can never be absolutely satisfied with what they've got. You know, what is this? There's something, you know, which that's going to always make us want more. And then, then it carried on that um, they, they did, the other question there was, um, well, I thought, I thought this, was, this was an amazing result. Then they, they said, um, if, if your, if your neighbour took, took a drop in their wages so that, so that their wages came down, so their wages came down a certain percentage. Would you would you be happy to do the same? Would you be happy to do the same, and and live with 20% less in your wages? And they said, yes, yes. I thought about it. They said yes. You know, I could do that if the if the neighbour if the neighbour was getting uh, 20% less, <laughs> then I'd be happy to settle for 20% less. So there was this incredible, you know, sort of contradiction. You know, that first they needed first they needed twenty percent more, then they were happy to do with twenty percent less if the neighbour got twenty percent less. You know, so there was this sort of subtle indication that the reason they needed more, you know, was it was their defence against this this encroaching neighbour. You know, that they they had to keep up with or you know, or keep in check with. You know, this sort of step situation that. He gets a bit better off, then I have to get a bit better off. Then he gets a bit better off, then I have to get a bit better off. You know? And so, that, when it comes right down to the individual thinking like that, you know, then it, it shows you, you know, why the whole economy you know, is geared the way it is. You know? this, 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 need for, this need for economic growth, growth at any cost, you know? Why it is so fierce, and why it is just so paramount? Why it is just so important? Why it is more important than anything else in politics? This economic growth, you know, not not really the quality of life, just this this power that comes from economic growth. But also, uh, one of the things which is quite noticeable. This was, was reading in um, this was a psychological uh, article that. Uh, People, uh, people also, when people uh, 
had were in these situations where they were sort of constantly at threat in some way, then they, then they turned. They tended to be some sort of resentment, some sort of grudge. There's a, a grudge against these these people, and then these uh, the, these re- resentments and grudges uh, uh, would sometimes sometimes flare up. They, you know, people could take them inside, and, and they wouldn't. Uh, they, they wouldn't acknowledge them, or they would, they would treat them as uh, they'd start blaming themselves in some way. And there was all these, I mentioned all sorts of tensions uh, that, w- w- that were occurring uh, because uh, people were bearing these grudges, and then you know, then they would, then they would sort of come out. They, they would, they would, they would suddenly flare up. Uh, under all sorts of unlikely conditions, uh, it, people um, would get into situations for any sorts of reasons where they would st- start getting intense blaming of themselves. And after a while, it's as if they could only, they could only take so much of this. They could only take so much of, of this blaming. I mean, I'm not talking now generally about people. The, now I'm talking about very specific cases uh, where, where things um, be, uh, became uh, psychological issues. This is not, I'm not talking about the general population. But it's, it's interesting in as much as it is uh, the human condition uh, which does affect everybody. It's the same pattern. You know, it, it's, there is that liability at any time. And what was happening was that uh, these, these people... Uh, when they became very resentful of themselves for any reason, not necessarily just the neighbours, uh, then, because it's very difficult for them to sort of contain in themselves, uh, they would start projecting this. But they would they would start sort of externalising it, and um, ex- just externalising it on other people. When when they externalised it, projected it on other people, it actually gave them uh, an enemy. It actually gave them a sort of an enemy which they could then engage with in, in, a, in a far more sort of dynamic, sort of violent way. And this was, this, you know, this was quite a serious concern. That uh, it's as if people actually uh, needed enemies uh, just, just as a means of releasing this, this inner tension. And uh, once these inner tensions start... Uh, Andy was saying, you know, that uh, it's a it's a, 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 ph- a phenomenon uh, these days that um, uh, th- these tensions in people are building up, starting and building up far more than than they've ever been they've ever been recorded before. So I mean, actually, this, this is quite serious uh, for this age. And th- th- there was a survey I was reading in, in the paper some time back that. Uh, in in, Eng- in England, uh, in in the fifties, they they did a survey of people who were uh, the general content the general contentment of people uh, under under uh, certain uh, under all many, many sort of conditions. You know, their, their, their working conditions, you know, with their wages, their living conditions, and how happy they were, how ha- how content they were. And they did this survey, and they got these readings. Like um, either they're, they're happy, they're, they're very happy, they're very content. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're generally content, generally happy, or then they're discontent, or they're miserable. And um, then they compared this. They've just done this survey again in England, and uh, it turns out now that people, uh, people now. Uh, are far more miserable, far more miserable, far more discontent now uh, in England. This is like across the whole country than they were than they were 50 years ago. You know, uh, conditions are such now that the people in England are just fed up. You know, in, in just so many in so many areas about so many things. So that's just that's just by the by that incident, but. Um, The, the the thing the thing that uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm really getting at here is the fact that this, uh, this blaming, you know, blaming uh, and disliking uh, is something that people tend to do as a matter of course. When you just think of all the, the, you know, the, the range of situations that, that we are involved in uh, in our lives, the connection with people and all, all the, the potentials for people being to be, get upset and um, get into situations where they may even get depressed or unhappy, many, many situations. And, and so people um, are at loggerheads with people. They, you know, they, they get into fights, rows, struggles, um, all sorts of tensions. And then sort of dislike can happen, even hating. And the problem with this situation is, now this, this is where it actually now comes into the scriptures. This is where the, 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 the teachings actually uh, are, are involved. That... Uh, this, uh, this situation has to be very, very clearly seen, very, very, very clearly registered in the mind that not to allow this, uh, this discontent and this hating to actually occur because um, when that happens, when you start hating people, then basically you're just adding hate to yourself. You have to be uh, very, very diligent very, con- very concerned uh, to watch this. This way, you do need you do need a mindful practice to make sure that you can stay with this the whole time, um, uh, because this uh, this hatred. The Buddha says that uh, you know, hatred you know, hatred cannot cure anything. You know? Hatred breeds hatred. It can only simply make make the situation worse and all the situations that happen in the world many many uh, problems and troubles uh, what we really need to do you know what is most necessary is to practice forgiveness you know forgiveness uh, is uh, isn't easy it's a it's a very difficult thing um, it's something that you have to work on because we aren't, you know, we aren't natural forgivers. You know? uh, we can be generous, you know, but we aren't always natural forgivers. And so, this business of actually looking, looking with real sincerity into, into yourself, any sort of situation that arises where you can see grudges, you know, we, you can see, you can see any sort of grudge that arises. Um, I mean, this is where you can use your neighbours. You can use your neighbours very effectively, very effectively like this. People you work with, people you live with, people that live across the fence. Just watch this discontent. Any sort of grudge or discontent or this thing which boosts up the ego to such an extent that it is underneath finding some means of some sort of discontent. And you can know right there that some sort of grudge is happening. So this this looking, this is why this is why our meditation practice is very very important because what it does is it helps you to focus. It helps you to to look in at yourself and to see these to see these situations arising in you. To see this tendency uh, for for discontent and for grudges to arise. And just the fact that we don't, we don't notice it, that is the dangerous thing. Now, I notice a lot of the time when, when I'm reading, when I'm, I'm, I'm reading newspapers, there's all, these, there's all these conflicts going on around the world. And, and I get these feelings that, you know, there's, it's so unjust, you know, there's, there's these... Big countries attacking small countries. Uh, there are people, uh, minorities being uh, uh, repressed. You know, a lot of violence. Just that what seems a lot of unf- unfairness. And I can watch it, I can read these papers. I can get quite worked up about this. You know, and I, you know I have to keep keep remind myself. You know that uh, you know you know you're a, you know you're a monk. You're supposed to be detached. You know look at look at this. 
know, you have to, you know, because like we're not we're not encouraged to read newspapers, but you know, the fact is, you know, in the papers there is a lot of real dharma, a lot of real human conditions. But of course, the practice, you know, the practice in meditation, not just monks, practice in meditation, is also to, you know, to de- uh, detachment to see this, to watch it, and so watch it, watch how it affects you. And so I'd say to myself, well, you know, I'm not involved here. This has nothing to do with me. It's always been going on. You know, this violence has been going on for eternity. You know, since history, um, it's no different. All, all through my life, any time I care to pick up a newspaper, you know, there'd been something of this sort. There's some, some war going on somewhere. So I mustn't, you know, I'm, I've, I've got to keep a sense of perspective here and not get personally involved. That was it. The no, it was noticing that getting personally involved, identifying with one of the sides um, that, were, uh, that, were, that were being put on in an unfair way. And so after, I mean, I could do this. You know, I could say, oh, I'd read, read and say, oh, yeah, stand back, stand back. But then on, on various other occasions, it would come back again. It gets caught up in the same situation. And then, I'd look, then what I did was, uh, I decided to look at this. I said, well, what is this? You know, I'm not in, really, I am not involved with these people. This is happening somewhere else around the world. I'm not personally involved. You know, uh, it's not my situation. There are lots of other people that are personally involved with this. I don't have to get concerned. I don't have to get upset. And it doesn't have to cause me any irritation inside. But what I saw was that you know, as, as I kept looking at this, just started to feel it. As it start, I just watched the feeling. And the feeling was always the same. No matter what the issue, the feeling was always, always the same. It started off in the same way and start, started to sort of get worked up. Then after a while, you know, almost, almost getting into violence. And I could see that what it was was this basic sense, this, this basic discontent that was in me. You know, it was this personal discontent which was unresolved. It was, and the strange thing was, there was a, a thing in me that actually needed um, situations where there were discontent. It, there was something in me that, that had a need to find discontent in the world to relieve something in me. Uh, and I began to realize this. You know, I'm being conned by this. There's a need to get... There was this, this sense of indignation. You know, this is not right. This is, you know, this is, this is unjust. This is unacceptable. Why does the world, why does the world allow this? You know, a feeling of injustice. Very, very poignant feeling of injustice. You know? And, you know, I mean, because it was interesting that one of the situations that used to occur was... At one time, in this same issue that's been going on for ages, I used, I used to be backing the other side. At one time, I used to sympathise with the other sides. So somewhere along the line, I've, I've swapped over. You know? So I don't really have any true you know, connection or concern with these people. It's just this thing that, wants to, that, that needs to side with the underdog in some way, but actually needs, needs discontent and injustice. And I saw that it's this need, this thing of sort of righteous indignation uh, that, that needs to explode and, and let this let this out. And and once I saw that, you know, I realised that you know, that's not me. You know, it's not me. It's not my concern. It's just it's just uh, it's just a situation of you know a, a pent up discontent. You know coming from, you know, who knows where, for how long. And this, this, this basic underlying discontent, you know, this, this comes down to the, sort of the, the basic human condition. You know, it's always there. In fact, we're always in some way or other trying to overcome this, trying to get away from this. It's always following, following us around somewhere, and if something is something that is always finding something in the external world, uh, some way of, of expressing it. And 
you know, the, the Buddha said, you know, the truth is, this condition is samsara. You know, it, it, in other words, this is the conditioned realm. Beings live and are the production of a, con- a conditioned uh, situation. Everything is conditioned. You know, everything is either, you know, is here by some sort of cause or some sort of effect. And it's an ongoing thing. There isn't, there isn't any sort of stasis. There isn't a, a stabilizing point uh, where it doesn't happen. It's always going in either one direction or another. I mean, that's as long as there is ignorance. I mean, the whole point of the teaching is, of course, to see this, then you can stabilize it. But as long as that isn't seen, then there is this running around in circles. There is this chasing after. There is this, this running away. And either, you know, either it's our surroundings that are hitting us, or in some way we, we are hitting our surroundings. And in fact, it, it, that's happening all the time. The whole time, our surroundings are hitting us. I mean, they, you know, they might not actually, you know, they might not be hitting us. But the thing is, we believe they are, you know. We, we only have to believe they are because we don't have any set actual way of, of knowing precisely, you know, uh, what the situation is. A lot of the time, we, you know, because you know, we have buttons, you know, people press our buttons. We get sort of tender points. P- people touch us. People touch us where we're very tender. I mean, they might not intend to do that, but people touch a tender spot on us, and then we, we actually do believe we are being attacked, you know, and that it's very painful. Even if they're just touching us with a feather, you know, if it's a, <laughs> if it's a very painful spot, you know, uh, it will be painful. So there's no way, there's no way, um, you know, the, in other words, this situation is totally volatile the whole time. It can't, it can't come to an end by itself. There'll always be discontent. People will always be arranging and organizing life, you know, even through governments, always trying to adjust, always making these adjustments to, to get some sort of stabilization. But of course, you know, in a world where uh, everyone, everyone, you consider everyone's your enemy, even if you don't do that consciously, I mean, even, even if neighbors are doing it that live next door to each other, then inevitably, this, exactly the same process, exactly the same human process, is happening on an international level. And so, whatever uh, adjustment is made at, at this end, is going to upset the balance at that end, you know, it's, it's, someone's going to have to make an adjustment. You know, like the, the arms race, you know, it's intolerable, absolutely intolerable for someone uh, in the world uh, to be in a position, position where they don't have the latest, you know, the latest up-to-date weapons, you know, even when it's absurd, you know, like all, even all the tiniest, you know, third world countries now, there's great arms race for these third world countries to, to develop the nuclear bomb, you know, you know because, it's, because now it's the ultimate thing, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's a thing you can't win, you know. Like um, America uh, spent... So, Billions and billions of dollars on, on defend, defending some, uh, in building some defence system, and somehow, <laughs> somehow or other, um, infiltrators got into their defence system and got the plans. And the next thing, China has got this. <laughs> China's got the same system. You know, they, they've suddenly got it. You know, so the whole pointlessness, the whole pointlessness, the whole pointlessness of this operation it is. If you build a weapon, doesn't matter how sophisticated it is, actually, in the end, it's going to turn against yourself. You're, all you're trying to do is get an immediate jump on someone else. You know, at any given moment, you just want you just, you just want the best weaponry. But you know, the next step is that those exact weapons you ha- you ha- you have invented to defend yourself, now the enemy has got them, and now they are your enemy. They they aimed at you. You know, so. This is samsara. You know? This, you know, this is the this is the way situations are. So, uh, so what can we do? Where does this leave us? In the same way, you know, it it, uh, it, it, leaves, it left me. You know, the thing is that you do you do need to uh, you do need to detach. Uh, basically, what you can do is you can't change the world. However, the the world is going to end up. The world is going to end up. But you can, 
release yourself. You can free yourself uh, by your practice. You know? All you need to do, you don't need, you, know, you don't need to convert everybody. You don't need to, you, know, you don't need to change every, anybody. A lot of people think, you know, the people they live with or the people they live next door to, they have to, they have to convert them. They have to change into the same system as them. People, you, know, you get a lot of people like this, really feel that it, it, they really need to change other people. You know, and, you, and actually, you can't. You can't really change other people. You can change yourself. I mean, it's extremely difficult changing yourself, but, <laughs> but, but you do have a chance there. So, very simply, very simply, now, forgiveness, forgiveness is just so relevant. I mean, with all religions teach this, but, but uh, it isn't really given uh, uh, enough space. That when you forgive somebody, um, it's, not, it's not just a matter of uh, you, you're doing them a favour, you know, you're doing them a favour or you're just forgetting what, they, what they've done, you know, you're putting up the situation, you know, you're, you're being magnanimous. You know, you know, f- when you forgive somebody, uh, you, know, you, you know, really make the most of that because what you're doing is, when, you, when you're forgiving someone, you're actually letting go of something. That thing in you, that thing in you, uh, which needs, which needs contention, Gets relief, you know. Actually, gets relief from from attacking other people, you know. It's like self uh, self pity, you know. Uh, in, in, in enjoying resentment, enjoying resentment, which a lot of people do, you know. There's there's like a there's like a, a negative profit in in hate. Hatred is hatred can be very juicy. There's a lot of energy in it. You know, it can get you know get you worked up, get you very excited, you know. Uh, but, but enjoying you know that sort sort of perverse resentment is is basically self pity you know? Sel- and self pity doesn't get you anywhere you know you have to you have to act and so you know make the most of forgiving all the people <laughs> that you have resentments for whoever they are you know they are your ch- they are your actual benefits they are your your chance to actually Release this thing in you which holds on to the the things that are keeping you like a small a small self, a small being, this thing this thing with its principles and its pride and its identity, that keeps you a very tiny, closed in, contracted thing. You know? Now to to be released from that, you know uh, the different the opposite to that is openness. Openness is is, you know, this, this term they have these days, you know, this, this, the new era, cosmic consciousness, you know, it's, it's good, a, good, good a phrase as any. You know, but, but opening out, getting away from that, making the most of things like forgiveness, you know, really, really let go, you know, look at it in detail. In other words, all what's being said here is every aspect of your life, just keep looking at it, all the things that you experience, uh, all the negative things, you know, and all the positive things. Just question them. Just keep looking at them. Because what we do is, we tend to just go along, whether we're happy, you know, or whether we're, whether we're miserable. We tend to be caught up in a momentum, uh, which just uh, is is a habit, is a habit pattern. We're caught up in plodding along in a habit pattern. So even if we're experiencing positiveness and happiness, it's still just this expected habit pattern. And it's doing the same thing as just reliving. It's just a rehash, chewing the cud of all our old habits. It isn't really, it isn't really opening to a, a true communication and connecting with an open happiness. So keep actually questioning and keep looking at this. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking inside. Every experience you get, you know, do this as much as you can. Uh, because this is the point of your sitting practice. The sitting practice is when you're keeping your attention here. And the whole point is you're keeping the attention here and, and, you're, and you're practicing the vipassana. That you're simply watching what this mind does, watching its behavior, seeing that conditioning. And of course the positive side of conditioning is that you can now influence that conditioning. You can influence in that, that conditioning into positive conditioning. Uh, that the Buddha said that there is a there is the, the karma, the karma which is the end 
the karma which is karma for the end of karma. In other words, if it's positive karma, then positive conditioning, then that's then you're opening up. People, in other words, you know, people who are kind people, uh, uh, then then they necess- they are just naturally open. You know, they, they they open up. And they have far more opportunity of connecting with release. Uh, all, all acts of kindness, you know, make the most of kindness and generosity, giving, really make the most of these things because uh, you open up and that, little, that, that self in there, it shrinks, it disappears, and the big self opens up. Of course, the opposite to this is you know, hating. Hating, uh, you become... a contracted, solid, miserable, mean, nasty little thing. You know, and and uh, you know this expression, we have this, ex- we have this sort of wise expression, you know, a lot of these old expressions that, you know, in the language, you know, actually come from, from, from wise points. You know this expression, birds of a fe- feather flock together. What you notice is that people who tend to actually be Actually, be sort of nasty in their personalities. Uh, they they tend to actually get caught in situations where they are in the same situation with people of similar natures, and that's because when they're uh, they're nasty in their speech and their attitudes and their behaviour, they're doing it to people a lot of the time that are in, are in a similar situation. You notice that in social social situations, these it's as if they, they, they filter through, people filter through and um, conglomerate in, in situations where they tend to group with people of a similar nature. You know, like the classic condition of this, a classic example of this, say, is a prison, a prison situation where uh, prisoners will get caught in a situation where, I mean, there's a whole range of all different standards of prisons, but, you know, the worst possible situations where... The, where uh, the people in these prisons, the, ser- the, the inmates, it, it's just hatred. They hate each other, uh, and, there's, and there's, no, there's no concern for each other whatsoever. Ever, and they just indulge in just being as hate- hateful as they can to, to each other, the wardens, and that's the only way of relief. You know, the idea of being kind or saying a, a word of kindness, uh, they, they just couldn't do that. It would just be totally. Uh, they would, be, it would, they would be unable to do that because it would be so inappropriate to them. They can only respond with some sort of uh, mean, uh, cruel thing. And this is, I mean, this is the truth of the nature of samsara. You know, this, this is how it happens. Now, to get away from that, you, know, you make the most of this ability that we have, this natural ability uh, to be kind uh, and to forgive. You know, so work on that. You know, don't be so quick to to make to, to harbour grudges when people do things to upset you. Be willing. You know, be willing to give them the benefit of the doubt because it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt you really if you forgive somebody. And that, not only that, you feel great afterwards. You, know, you feel a lot better because naturally something has been released while you're harbouring a grudge. You're harboring some sort of indigestible thing, you know, as, as if you've eat, eaten something you can't digest. You know, you're experiencing a form of indigestion, psychic, spiritual in, indigestion, you know, and you, you know, you, you want to get rid of that, and you just want to vomit that up, get it out of the system. It's not good for you. Of course, that's what that's what hatred is, isn't it? That's what hatred is. Uh, it's uh, it's turning its it's making you, because it contracts in on itself, and it t- turns into like a black hole. You know, it starts after a while. It can't, it, it can't expand outwards. It can only go in and get denser and denser and denser. And of course, what happens when these people die is they, they go to uh, the hell realms. You know, the Buddha explains, you know, that you know, hell realms do really exist. You know, and they are dreadful places. You know, they are, you know, and they are. Once you get caught in these hell realms, that you know, the 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 implosion of it, you know, the density of it, um, is utterly, you know, utterly almost impossible to get out. You have to simply wait until that karma, until that dreadful karma, 
actually eventually burns out. Is it, you know, Buddha says that's just about the only way you, you, know, you, you can get out of a hell realm is to go through the whole thing until, it eventually, you know, until that, that bad karma is used up and you know, then, then, you can, then you can come out of it. But it's very difficult when you get caught, you get caught in that momentum to get out of it. So very, very simply, you, know, you don't allow that to happen because you do, you do have available to you this psyche, uh, this, this, uh, the mentality, this whole spiritual attribute where you can prevent that you know, and you can make a profit by you know, just, you know, just forgive people. You know, for, don't, don't, allow, don't allow the situation to arise where you start harbouring grudges or at least look at it. Even if you, if you have a grudge, don't feel, uh, you know, I've got to get rid of this grudge, it's dreadful. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not going to think this. I'm not going to feel this, you know, because that's the same as um, basically as just saying forget it. That, that's not the case at all. The, the whole point here is that you look at it, you look at it, and you see it, and you feel it, feel it exactly where it is, however deep it goes, and then find at the point where you can let it go, because it's only there because you're holding on to it. You know, you are, you are, you are gripping hold of it. Something in you, you you have to discover how it is, uh, how it is, what it is that holds on, how it does it. Because it isn't you. See, this is it. This is the tricky thing. You can't just say, I'll let go. I mean, I've done this. I mean, people, you know, people have really hurt me in the past and I've just said to myself, you know, what is pointless. This is pointless carrying this grudge. You know, I, you know, I forgive this person. You know, it's okay. I'm not going to hold that grudge anymore. You know, and then on another occasion, something will happen, uh, some negative situation that will happen, that will annoy, annoy me, and it will come up. You know, this, this situation with this person has done this dreadful thing to me, said, said this nasty thing to me, <laughs> whatever it was. Uh, you, know, you, know, you get this replay. You know, it's right there. It's still the structure and what the interesting thing is, when you do another thing uh, that triggers it off, someone else will do something that upset you, or some situation that upset you, then all these things replay. That's the same, uh, the, the same old um, uh, thing rhyming in again, the same old refrain of the, of the same old hatred. That person is still, then you go through it again uh, until you realise, hang on, wait a minute, didn't I forgive that person? No, you didn't. <laughs> So he said, well, but wait a minute, if, I, if, I, if I forgave that person, why is he still there? Why is this ogre of a character still there causing me problems? And something is holding on. So, and this is the trick, of course, you have to see what, are, what is the thing that is holding on? How is it holding on? And, it, and you can only do that by really, you know, really, really paying attention. In other words, your, 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 quality, your quality of being enhances to the extent that you are attentive, that you are mindful, because you're transforming the, this whole thing, this whole pattern, this whole momentum, this whole basic habit pattern that, that you're caught in, you know, which is samsara, basically. You, you, it's just a habit pattern that you, that's difficult for you to find a way out of, because basically you don't identify it in the first place, you don't see it. You know, this, this need to see this and let it go. So... Uh, there is this need to constantly just keep looking at this, you know, just just keep looking and looking and looking, and just the fact that uh, seeing the the, uh, the basic nature of the ground, the way that this discontent, this discontent uh, always reasserts itself, no, ma- no matter what what situation you're in, even if, if it's a lighter situation, you get away from a heavy situation, you get into a lighter situation, what a relief. You know, it's so great to be free of that, that burden I've had for years. Maybe a great debt, maybe a great debt. Um, suddenly it's been paid off and, oh, you know, that's it. You know, I've got no more problems after this. You know, then after a while when things calm down, you, then little problems start to reassert themselves and little irritations you know, start to happen. And you realise then, it's the same sort of annoying irritation. It's not that great heavy thing, but it's the same uh, little uh, annoying sense of irritation. And that is always there. That sense that that's because, it, you, because you're basically in a situation of, dis- of discontent, which is a pattern. It's a pattern of discontent, which is always, you know, like, it's like when, you, when you mow the grass. You know, you mow the grass, 
because those seeds are still there, sooner or later uh, they're going to come up again. Or we say the weeds. You know, you get you get you cut down all the weeds, but you don't get the roots out. Sooner or later, the, the shoots of the weeds will come up again. It's like you know, with in the deva, in the deva realms, in 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 the heavens. You know, in the uh, the mangala. You know, uh, in, in the mangala sutta, the start of the mangala sutta is that a deva. Um, a deva comes to the Buddha and says, um, uh, uh, devas, devas and human beings are constantly in a state of discontent. You know, can, you, can you tell us, you know, can, can you tell us what's, you know, what's, what, what's, what, is a tr- what is a true blessing? What is a true blessing for, a, you know, how can, how can we live? You know, it's, not, it's not only human beings, it's devas as well. Even with their refined existence, with you know the incredible uh, rewards and benefits, you know the happiness. You, know, you can imagine, you know, being as rich as you possibly can be on this in, on this planet, you know, and uh, whatever you can buy, whatever luxuries you can buy, so your life, you know, is you know, is, is as as comfortable as it possibly can be. You know, it's still nothing compared to the realms of the devas. You know, they've got real incredible luxury you know? but even they even they you know, are still in samsara what they're doing is they are experiencing a very very refined form of discontent you know discontent uh, will reassert itself and then you know it becomes it's always this irritation of you know, the fly in the ointment you know? get things nearly right and or you get it going right for so for so long and uh, then it goes wrong again. You're always back here. You know? you know, there's this this thing, this thing that is never really happy. You know? Especially when you, know, you get you know a, a, a jolt which really knocks you back into the you suddenly see who I am. This is my personality. This discontent. You know? Here you, know, you suddenly see who you are in a certain situation. You know all your all your problems, all your weaknesses, all the feelings you feel that you're inadequate. You know suddenly come up and such oh god that's still there I, mean, I have this all the time you know and I became a monk to get rid of my inadequacies you know but still you know every now and then a situation will happen you know around people you know uh, or any situation and suddenly this this whole it opens suddenly opens this ca- cavern opens this being is still there you know the basic neurotic the basic neurotic uh, base of of my personality you know it's, which I do, do my level best 99% of the time to sort of disguise which are the things which I don't want anyone to know about me, you know, my weaknesses and inadequacies, you know. But of course, in situations where you have to cope with difficult situations, you know, suddenly it'll come forward again. And that's always there, you know. However, think of all the clever people in the world, and all, you know, that you, I mean, all the incredible things in the world, you know, sending people, or sending machines to Mars or people to the moon, all the incredible inventions, you know, all these people are good in a particular direction, you know. You know, the, all, you know, the great artists, great composers, I mean, like Beethoven, you know, like Beethoven, absolutely incredible music. But if you read his life story, you know, really a, a most miserable, pathetic character, you know, my goodness, you wouldn't... You wouldn't you wouldn't give him the time of day. But I mean, <laughs> incredible, incredible music he composed. So, you know, everyone underneath, as long as they are attuned to this basic, this basic pattern of conditioning, you, know, you can never be happy. You're never happy while you're relying on conditioning because you're constantly adjusting the mechanism. And when you make an adjustment, something over there adjusts. You know, sooner or later, you're, you're going to end up over there, or that's going to end up over here, and you're going to be back, back in the same. The discontent is going to come come along, you know? and not only that, you're getting old. You're getting older all the time. So, <laughs> you know, uh, people people that identify themselves with you know with their body, with their health, with their beauty, you know, with their, how attractive they are. You know, you know some people, you know. People don't have anything else, but they are very attractive, you know. Uh, they have no choice, you know, that everything focuses on that, you know. Their attraction, you know, their attractiveness becomes very important to them. But of course, that's sad, isn't it, really? Because you eventually you know that's, that's being eaten away, eroded by time, and that's going to catch up with them. And they're going to be the same as the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, and so, you know, p- people who are genius in, genius in, in all sorts of fields, uh, it's, it, you know, it's on, on a broad front, you know, uh, they are, you know, that, that's that one particular point they are, they are good at, you know. So, I mean, I'm not going to go through the whole range of uh, problems and dissatisfactions of people, you know, because everybody's got them, you, you know. They're spread out generally in the world, and we, every single one of us is a good cross-section of the whole, the whole conditioned condition of unsatisfactoriness. But the benefit is, you know, the beauty of this is that we do have the, the Buddha went to a lot of trouble, to, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to explain to us that there is a way out of this, you know. You can overcome this, you can overcome these problems, you can overcome these problems with uh, be, becoming enlightened to them. Know, know yourself, you know, know, know this condition, because you, are, you look in, into yourself, look in, into your basic nature, your, your, your mind, your body, you are... The, the, you know, you are the expression of this condition you know, par excellence, so to, so to speak. The Buddha said, you don't need to look any further uh, than this mind and body to know, to know what's happening on the other side of the universe, what conditions the other side of the universe, e- even if it's endless, you know, the Buddha said, you can know exactly what's going on there because it's exactly the same situation that's going on here. And you can focus on that. You can put all your attention on that. Of course, meditation is the path. You just constantly keep looking. Every opportunity to get. All the, think of all the situations that are happening to you throughout the day. You know? Just actually consciously pay attention to them. Not generally. You know, say, because you generally do. You generally know what's going on. I mean, if I was to ask you what you did today, any of you, you could probably list me. You did this at this time, this, 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 this. You know, I could do the same. But the thing is, actually, actually consciously pay attention to that in a, in a conscious way. And you'll see it's a whole, different, a whole different quality of attentiveness. And your actual awareness increases. Your actual, your actual quality of mindfulness uh, increases the quality of it. And your, after a while, of course, your, actual, your whole quality of being um, is going to increase. You're going to get more out of life. You are eventually going to, you know, your problems are going to begin to reduce because you're going to see them coming. You're going to see where you put your foot in it. You're going to see how you can prevent things. You can see how letting go of that is just so, so much less painful. And in fact, it's easy to let go of these things, you know, once you, you know, once you put your mind to it, you know. That stubbornness that doesn't want to let go, to let go of that thing that that person did to me or said to me, you know. But it only hurts you. It doesn't hurt them. You carry it around with you. You're carrying that burden around as if you're carrying lead weights around with you. you know, you're, you're trying to live a, live a, a light life. Maybe you, imagine you're carrying around suitcases of lead <laughs> with you all the time. And then you're and you're complaining, you know, about you know uh, the, your situation and what people you know what people do to you. Let it all go, and you're just not going to worry about what people do to you. you know. Be totally abusable, you know, so that matter whatever people say to you, it just falls off, you know, it just runs away, it just cannot affect you. I mean, easy to, e- easy to say, but it can be done. And what else is there? That's your practice, that's the direction. It's the most valuable thing you can do, you know, make the most of it. It's right there waiting. Okay, I think the time has beaten us. I'll uh, I'll end it there.